so to summarize the previous class so we could understand what's uh, SR flip-flop uh, how to write the SR flip-flop code using multi-way branching and uh, JK flip-flop uh, we have uh, explored its output even by taking Xilinx simulations also and uh, to note the difference here we had made only few changes wherever SR is there you replace it with JK other than that the only other differences replace the alternative 3 when sr is equal to 3 means s equal to 1 r equal to 1 in jk when j equal to 1 k equal to 1 you replace q equal to undefined with q equal to not of q that's the only difference rest everything is same and similarly if i take the d flip flop and t flip flop in d flip flop we as it is very simple because if you don't have any reset it's just like if you uh, it should follow the previous state if it is reset equal to zero, uh, 1 or else D. If reset is not considered in D flip-flop, then it's like Q is equal to D all the time. So, hence in D flip-flop compulsorily or it is preferred to have the reset. In T flip-flop, what is the change? T acts as a toggle um, in control. So, if T is 0, Q should be following its previous state. If T is 1, Q should be toggling. So these all things we uh, looked into in the previous class. Next, we also learnt about ring counter. Where in ring counter, we have clock and queue. So queue is of four bit and you need to compulsorily initialize it, which I just annotated with very important uh, wordings. So it means initialization is must. If you don't initialize, it will start with undefined. When undefined X will not come in any of the alternatives here, so it will not execute. So hence, it's compulsion to have the initialization such that any one of this possible outputs should be the initialized value, either 1 or 2 or 4 or 8. You should somehow make this value to come in this loop. Then automatically this uh, increments in a uh, circular fashion or a ring counter fashion. Okay, So this is about the ring counter. Next, Johnson counter is an extension of the ring counter wherein your sequences are slightly changed 0, 8, 12, 14, 15, 7, 3, 1. In the same way, you have to prefer any one of these values to be initialized. I prefer 0. 0 is initialized. So when 0, it should go to 8. When 8, it should go to 12. So at, like that, it will circulate. And of course, you can see that in ring counter as well as Johnson counter, I did not make a mention of default statement in the case because it's an optional statement. Okay. So, default statement has been not put. Default statement is optional. Okay, so this you remember. So, that's why I did not take. So, if at all you take the default statement, then make sure that this default statement should lead the output value to any one of this outputs that is possible outputs. If you write something like other than this, if you write zero, then think that once it enters the default statement, so it is zero. Zero alternative is not there. Since always it comes to the default statement, so your counter will give always zero. So this is a important thing that you should be aware of. Okay. Next. Sequence counter. Very important. So sequence counter has a huge importance you know in our laboratory experiments there is one experiment called stepper motor stepper motor is a motor which rotates either clockwise or anti-clockwise okay so this motor is used in several applications wherever you want a circular motion to be implemented so stepper motor is an very important application so hence we have this experiment as a interfacing experiments we have a stepper motor and we will connect it with FPGA so when you run that particular code this motor should run according to the input commands so that uh, that was a lab laboratory experiment and this is the sequence counter is having application in application in stepper motor Okay, so that's why it plays a very important role. What is the meaning of sequence counter? A ring counter is also a type of sequence counter. 
Johnson counter is also a type of sequence counter. So its application is other applications are ring as well as Johnson. Those are also uh, application. So it these things comes under sequence counter. Sequence counter can be anything. It is not fixed like ring counter 1, 4, 8, whatever, 1, 2, 4, 8 and Johnson counter 0, 12 like that. It's not like that. It can have any sequence. Here, what is the sequence? 0 is the first value, then followed by 1, then followed by 5, so this is 5, then followed by 7, then followed by 9, then followed by 12, then again back to 0. So this is a sequence. And when this is a sequence, you have to again write the truth table like in the case of this JK, present state and next state. So present state, PS, next state is an NS. It's a Q value, right? It's a Q value. So when present state is 0, what should be the next state? 1. When present state is 1, what should be the next state? 5. When present state is 5, what should be the next state? 7. When present state is 7, next state is 9. When present state is 9, next state is 12. And the last one, when the present state is 12, the next state is 0. So this is a truth table. Of course, it can be written in binary form. I'm writing in the decimal form. That's the only difference. You can write 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, uh, like that. You can continue. Okay, it's, it's an option for you. Same thing. You can see that case statement is a friend of you because it will it is very simple because it will resemble the truth table you can see that it is a truth table you just transfer this truth table as it is in the case for following the language construct that's it some rules language has been defined like you should write it in this way after that colon then semicolon just follow that it's as good as a writing tree truth table 0 1 1 5 you can compare here 1 5 5 7 5 7 7 9 9 12 12 0 5, 7, 7, 9, 9, 12, 12, 0. It's, it's as good as a truth table itself. That's why case statement is, is like treated as, you know, uh, a friend of us. It will help us writing a code in a very easy way. If you know the truth table, it's like your coding is very easy with a case statement. Okay. But here, the alternatives are the output itself, previous output itself. Hence, Q itself becomes the select line. Q itself becomes a select line in sequence counter, like in your uh, ring counter and you can see that in the sequence in the sequence take any one of the value for initializing let me take the least value zero is there so i uh, normally we have a convention of taking the least value out of the sequence to be initialized so least value in the sequence is zero so i initialize it with zero so zero will have the alternative so zero to one one to five five to seven accordingly when the passage of the clock varies so this is how the sequence counter is designed. So let us just have uh, this uh, in your uh, Xilinx platform so that, let me keep it. So I'll quickly move on to the Xilinx. I'll copy this Xilinx. I'm opening the previous project. So by now, I hope you might have uh, been very well aware of like how to work with Xilinx. New source, very long module, sequence counter, next, next, finish. Meanwhile, I'll just copy it. It's the same code. Again, the same problem. It is telling. I just uh, just copy part of it. Let me check. So yesterday's problem should not be encoder. So that's why I'm uh, just uh, taking uh, define always block it. So input clock output uh, uh, reg we will declare it by ourselves because it is having some uh, problem with copying. Even this. Even this is having problem. So if if this is creating a problem, then uh, somewhere uh, the format, the font that I have used in the PPT, maybe it is not recognizing. So let me show. Let me try it once. It will definitely show an error. This Unicode quotes, double quotes, or dashes were detected in the selected block. These characters need to be converted. So that's a problem. 
so wherever quotes double quotes or uh, dashes are used that's not been able to detect here well it's okay because you already know it so if i go on writing it, it takes a lot of time so we'll see if time permits then definitely we'll write this program okay in same program if i type it it work it works it will show maybe it will show the error because of that ascii conversion you know any simulator any tool that we are working background there will be a scriptical language there is script or scripting language so there it will be working okay so according to that code it will work oh, fortunately it has cleared so save it uh, then uh, simulation then sequence counter simulate behavioral model okay so normally even in c programming also i normally use dev c++ compiler for c programming there also if you directly copy from the uh, word or ppt to the dev c++ there also it will fail to detect the double quotes and single quotes now we need to edit there also okay it's it's all that tool related uh, things fund us okay you need to follow it when you are using that tool you need to follow its rules right you cannot enforce that your rule should be followed by that particular tool so here uh, i don't initialize i don't restart it the reason for not restarting it is i intentionally have initialized this q value to 0000 if i restart it the 000 will get vanished and if it gets vanished then the counter will stay at zero itself or undefined itself so that's why i'm not doing it so let me define the clock force clock leading edge 0 turning edge 1 clock as period as 1 microsecond itself i'll take 1 microsecond so click on ok so run it so i'll change the radix for readability ok zoom to fit so i, I just go on <clears throat> running it 1579120157912 that's it okay so this is what is the sequence counter and i just quoted quoted you that uh, the applications of the sequence counter is ring counter and johnson counter we have already seen its uh, uh, working we have already seen its uh, coding so now what we do is we just see like how stepper motors uh, counter looks like sequence looks like so in detail depth i'll just uh, take it uh, in the future classes when i'll be i'll be explaining all these interfacing experiments right now you just take the task to implement the sequence the sequence of the stepper motor is 3 9 c 6 this is a sequence okay so if this is a clockwise sequence then what to, what will be the uh, anti clockwise uh, sequence this is stepper motor okay this is a task for you so anti clockwise is 6 c 9 3 this is anti clockwise fine so this is a task for you try to do it so one extra burden i have been putting on you is like you have to control the direction of the rotation direction of the sequence 39c6 definitely what how do you write 39c6 here if i write in this form present state and uh, next state this is n okay next state 3's next state is 9 9 next state is c c's next state is 6 6 next state is 3 so this is a true table you directly transfer it to the case statement so 3 comes here 9 comes here c comes here 6 comes here 9c 6 3 so this comes over here so four lines end case finish your your your, your coding is done for that clockwise if i want to have anti clockwise similarly only anti clockwise i can do it 6 c 9 3 6 c 9 3 here so after 6 what should come c come c come c 9 3 6 that i can put it here anti clockwise is done but i want these two things to have in a single go in a single code that's why i can uh, give you additional input variable additional input as direction control dir use this dir if it is if dir is 1 maybe it is a clockwise rotation if dir is 0 then it is anti clockwise rotation so that extra input you need to define you will be having two case statements so this is a task i am giving to you 
try to do it in your Xilinx. Let me just uh, know if you if you are able to solve it. If you have uh, successfully got the output, take the snapshot of it, put it in my WhatsApp group. If you have uh, got some errors, take the snapshot, put it in my WhatsApp group. Uh, not not group. You can put it in personal uh, personal um, number also for me. Okay, I can assist you. So if you have uh, problems, I'll definitely help you. If you have got the output by looking at it, even I feel happy. That's it. No enforcing of assignment and all. It's like if you want to practice it live, it is left to you. Okay. So theoretical, it's not a theoretical subject. It's a practical subject. Practically, you need to experience it. I'm telling you, with only having a strong hold on this RTL design and HDL language, there are a lot of opportunities, job opportunities in the market. Okay. So that's why I'm telling you to experience it by simulating it in live. Okay, stop being a bookworms. Stop believing the book directly. Try to test it. What is written, whether I am getting practically or not. That's a way of learning such subjects. Okay, I hope you'll do it. So quickly we'll move on to the very, very important topic. I'm writing here. How much very I shall I shall write? Very, 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 I think enough. Important. Okay very 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 important okay i rarely say that okay i rarely say that so i in in whole semester i may say one or two times so this is that one or two times okay so uh so please be attentive all of you very important concept if you understand this then think that you can understand almost 90 90 percent of the very log subject or the digital circuits fine it's very important thing I hope you are with me, uh, with attentiveness. Fine, we shall start then. Frequency divider. So this has got another name called clock divider. Both have the same meaning. Both means the same. Certain books author call it as frequency divider certain book authors call it as clock divider and let me tell you you explore any website or any videos the way i am preferring you to explain you you will hardly get it so this is uh, the my own uh, you know way of uh, you know understanding of the frequency divider in that way i am teaching maybe it, it is good or bad uh, that decision should be taken by you people so but it's a best way to get convinced with a frequency divider. So that's why I want your attention. So what it does, what exactly, what exactly it is. So frequency divider, it divides the frequency of the clock. Think that you have a FPGA. So any FPGA, FPGA is our target, right? Mainly we are doing all these things just for FPGA. You take any FPGA or any controller or any uh, device it will come with a frequency input a clock frequency okay operating frequency we call it as operating frequency now ask a question for yourself what is a operating frequency of your processor processor of your laptop or computer processor of your cell phone as well there is some operating frequency right we normally use it as 2 gigahertz Right? So we look upon the processor's performance on the basis of operating frequency. What does frequency tell us? It tells us about the speed, the delay, how much speed it is, how much fast the processor works. So that will be decided upon this operating frequency. And this mainly this operating frequency is a frequency of a clock. Okay, It's a frequency of a clock. Fine. So this is called a clock, a system clock. I can say this is operating frequency of system clock. System means if it is a processor, processor is a system. If it is FPGA, FPGA is a system. This is a system clock's frequency, remember. And this is fixed for respective FPGA or respective processor. For example, if you take Intel i3 processor, its operating frequency is fixed. If you take Intel i5 or i7 or newly launched i9 processor, its operating frequencies are fixed. 
maybe 1.8 gigahertz for one of the lower end processor maybe 2.2 gigahertz for the higher end processor so what actually it tells so if frequency is operating frequency is or system frequency is maybe 1 gigahertz then its operating speed operating speed is 1 divided by 1 gigahertz 1 giga is 10 raised to 9 1 divided by 10 raised to 9 is nano 1 nanosecond so it will execute a single task in this uh, at the rate of 1 nanoseconds fast so time which is too fast which is too fast that's a very good processor now you have the processor of 2 gigahertz and so on right so this is how the operating frequency help us to analyze how efficient is my system i hope it is clear now come back to the theoretical part of this concept it helps to slow down the blinking speed of the LED. What helps? Frequency division helps us to slow down the blinking speed of the LED or bulb or to control the speed of the motor. What motor? It may be stepper motor or DC motor or servo motor, whatever it is. It will help us to control the speed of it. If I, uh, if I assign you a task to switch on, to build up a switch, which, which like you have a switch in your in your home right to switch on bulb so you you switch switch it on bulb gets on if you switch it off bulb gets off or any anyone in your home has has a switch which controls the intensity of the bulb see now room is too dark i want that intensity i i'm going to bed for sleep i want that intensity of the bulb to be very low i want to adjust it on the other day, I am. it's my study time. I want that intensity of the bulb to be very high so that I can read it without any much trouble to my eyes. Whether that option is there in your, at your home, of course you will not be having, right? Means this frequency division is not happening here, there. Similarly, let me take the example of fan. All of your home has the fan, ceiling fan. There you will be having switch. With that, there is having additional control switch. You can control the speed of the rotation of the fan. We call it as regulator. In regulator, actually, it will divide the frequency. Of course, it is in terms of analog. Here I'm speaking with respect to digital. I'm just giving the analogy. You can control the speed of the fan. I can say that here in digital circuit, if you want to control the speed of the something, you have to compulsorily use this concept called frequency or clock divider. I hope you got it. Now I'll tell you one funda. You all have seen tungsten bulb. Right? So tungsten bulb, I'm very bad at handwriting. Let me just... Uh, So this is a tungsten bulb, right? There is a tungsten here, yellow color bulb, right? You uh, you had it earlier. So nowadays, uh, you, we have shifted to LED bulbs, right? Tungsten bulb. This tungsten bulb rating, if you check, it would be like 10 watts, 20 watts, like that. After that, they will say that it works at 20, 220 volts AC with frequency 50 hertz. What is it meaning? What is this 50 hertz? The meaning of this 50 hertz is it's a frequency, right? Frequency of the, this bulb means they are telling that uh, frequency of the bulb 50 hertz or this uh, you know input AC what we are getting it is of 50 hertz frequency. What exactly it is? It's like your AC will be having this shape, sinusoidal shape. RMS value has been given here. Its frequency, for example, if I locate its one period, this period. Its period or frequency is 50 hertz or its period is 1 by f which is 1 by 50 which is 0 0.02 seconds. Means at every 0 0.02 seconds it goes up and it comes down. Goes up and comes down. Goes up and comes down. So two ups if I want to take. Two ups if I want to take. So it comes at every 0.2 seconds, 0.02 seconds. Means this bulb, 
will be blinking will be blinking will be blinking at every 0.02 seconds do you believe it this tungsten bulb is blinking actually you are unable to see it it is blinking because we our human eye is incapable to catch that much speed actually it is blinking at what speed it is blinking it is blinking at the speed of 0.02 seconds 0.02 seconds is huge our human eye is incapable to capture it capture that blinking so that's why it looks as if it is on all the time it's on all the time that's how we feel right so this is the frequency for you okay similarly leds this led is on fpga if i show it if i was having some uh, lab related things here i could have directly shown you feel that that leds are on all the time right so fpga's frequency will be more than 1 megahertz 1 to 10 megahertz fpga's that we are having on our lab for your uh, syllabus that fpga's frequency itself is more than 1 megahertz okay so you get 1 gigahertz frequencies uh, uh, processor means 1 gigahertz frequencies um, fpga's are also available 1 megahertz frequency means this leds will be blinking at this much speed you just imagine 1 mega, 1 divided by F, 1 divided by 1 mega will give you what? Oh, mega is 10 raised to 10 raised to minus 6, which is which is uh, uh, micro, right? 1 microsecond. At 1 microsecond, LED will be blinking. When your human eye is incapable to capture 0 0.02 seconds blinking speed, then just imagine can you capture this speed one microsecond it is impossible now i want to check this led blinking i want to check this leds blinks i want to reduce the blinking speed it is blinking at the speed of one microseconds i want to bring that speed to either 0 0.1 and 0 0.1 second or one second like that right so if it is one second at every one second this blinks on and off on and off at every one second so that much speed i want to bring how to do it there is an option to do it so let me just explore that i hope the frequency division concept is clear to you now so now we are entering to the very important uh, slide i have that slide i don't have that slide let me have a, a blank slide any doubts please come up in the chat box So I'm intentionally spending more time to it because it is a very important concept. Okay. Yes, here, here we go on. Okay. So frequency division. Frequency division. Fine. So how to slow down the speed of the blinking of the LED? That's our basic now okay so after that we take this input clock is 1 megahertz my output new clock should be of less frequency so that i can see the blinking that is our task actually this is our aim what is our aim input is high frequency output is low frequency that is our aim how to do it so before that we understand the funda think that this is a system clock system clock is like this okay this is system clock fine and here this is positive edge this is positive edge now in this positive edge if i want my new clock to be in this fashion like like positive edge appears here but its negative edge appears at the next positive edge of the system clock it means what changes you can see here you can see that the period of this uh, let me write one more 
new clock one i start from here itself i extend till here then i take down then i extend till here then i go up this is a positive edge this is a positive edge so what i want you people to focus here is so so here what is a period period let me assume the period uh, let me give the name it as a t original t original t not is a t original okay t not is a t original then because it's a period period of one clock the period of this clock is i call it as a t new tn the period of this clock is t new 1 right so now we'll we'll just write it here okay so this t new is t new is 2 times t not am i right t original this period is 2 times of this here you can have two clocks two clocks period in single clock period of new clock so tn is 2 times of t not am i right similarly tn1 tn1 is 2 times of what? 2 times of Tn, which is in turn 4 times of T0, because Tn is nothing but 2 into T0, so 4 times of T0. Or else, in other words, this is in terms of delay, in terms of frequency, if, I'm, if, I'm, if I want to write this Fn, Fn, this F new clock, Fn is half of F0, means reciprocate it so reciprocate it it is 1 by tn reciprocate it is 1 by tn means fn reciprocate it 1 by 2 here reciprocate it 1 by t0 means f0 the frequency of the new clock is half the frequency of the original clock if the period increases by double then the frequency would halved if the period increases by four times then the frequency would have decreased four folds that's the meaning for example here Tn1, Fn1, reciprocated. This reciprocate for reciprocate F0. This is the thing. Getting? I hope you are getting. Here frequency is divided how many times? Here for this new clock, frequency is divided by 2 times. Here frequency is divided by four times that's a meaning okay that's a meaning next so here uh, we shall just extend the same uh, fundamental now what i do is i just take the clock again think that this uh, clock this clock, I am using it for counting purpose, counter. So, at every posage, counter increments. At every posage, counter increments. Same thing, I will write it here. So, so, 10 more minutes. Okay, let it be. So, this is a clock. This is a clock. This is a clock. So positive edge, positive edge, positive edge, positive edge, positive edge. This is positive edge, positive edge, positive edge, and positive edge. Okay. Now I have used a counter. The, that counter counts like this. Count is of four bits. This is of four bits. So it is starting at zero. Starting at zero. Here, it changes its logic to 1. It continues. At next positive edge, again, it changes its logic to 2. Again, here at positive edge, it is changing its logic to 3. So, at this point, again, it is changing its logic to 4. Sorry for my handwriting. 5. The important is the concept, not the handwriting. 
seven, eight, nine. Right? So this is a counter behavior. Now I want to split this counter in terms of the bits. Counter bits. Count of zero. Count of zero. See here. At zero, it will be having zero. Okay. At this positive edge, it increments the least significant bit of counter. This is count of zero. It increments and at till the next pause edge is encountered, so it will decrement, increment, so it will decrement. Least significant bit varies like this. Okay. I'll explain it uh, again. Just have a look. Count of 1. Where is like 0 it starts. Fine. So it will continue. And here, here, it takes 1. For example, here at this place, it will take 1. Uh, let me write it here. 0, 0, 0, 0. This is count 2. This is count 3. It's like I'm writing the truth table in the slant wise, and in, in the horizontal wise. 0, 0, 0, 0. Here, this is most significant bit. 0, 0, 0, 1. Uh, sorry, 1. Here, 0 for 2. How to write? 0, 0, 1, 0. For 3, how do, how do you write? 0, 0, 1, 1. 4, how to write? Here it is 1. Rest everywhere. 0, 0, 0. 5, 1 here, 0 here, 1 here. This is 0. So you can read it in this fashion. 0, 1, 0, 1, 5. 6, 0, 1, 1, 0. 7, 0 here. Rest everywhere. 1. 8, 1 here. Rest everywhere. 0. One, uh, 9, 1 here, 0, 0, 1. In the same fashion, this counter behaves. 0, 0, here, I'll complete, 1, 1. So, 0, it will take, 0, 0, 1, 1. So, this is 1, this is 1, 0 here. So, you can see here. So, its positive edge is here. Uh, so, let us not worry, okay? This positive edge is here. So next it it will take here 1 1 1 1 1 then followed by 0. What about count 3? So it will take up here. Okay, so this is how this uh, counter behaves. Now what is the understanding here? The understanding here is very simple. Again important, whatever I am writing. Here, think that these count 0, count 1, count 2, count 3 are my new clocks. This I'll take it as a new clocks. Now we'll see. If I take new clock equivalent to, if I take this new clock as a count of 0. If I take my new clock and if I assign this value to it, then how this count of 0 is behaving? At two positive edge or two clock periods, one clock period, second clock period. Two clock periods, I am having one clock period in this count of zero. So this means it is same as the previous one. Tn is equal to two times of T0 means Fn is half of F0. So Fn is F of count of zero is half of F of clock means I can write it divides frequency, division of frequency by division of frequency by two times. Similarly, if I assign count of one to new clock, so what is the value? F of count of one is here. In this, this is a period from here. If I take, let me take from here. From here, if I take how many clock cycles? One clock cycle, two clock cycle, three clock cycle, four, uh, four clock cycle. 
So this is 1, this is 2, this is 3, this is 4. So 4 clock cycles it has come. So 1 divided by 4 of original clock. It means division of frequency by 4 times. Now we can simply just go on writing count of 2 without looking at it also you can see 8 clock cycle. So this is divided by 1 by 8. This is for count of 2. 8 of frequency of clock. 8 times. Similarly, count of 3 is 16 times it divides. 16 times it divides. So it will be having 16 clocks. So 2, 4, 16, all these things, if you locate, see what it tells. I want to just derive a relation. I want to derive a relation between this and this. How many times it divides or else I can say this. So what I can say is, let me write it here, 2 raised to, 2 raised to, here plus 1 is equal to number of times clock clock's frequency divides. This dash is here whatever I write. Here whatever I write. Normally this 4 is considered to be n bit. If 4 is n, n equal to 4, then the most significant bit is n minus 1. Right? n minus 1. So, n minus 1, minus 1, minus 1 cancels. So, 2 raised to n is, is the number of times the clock divides. So, I will take it in the next slide. What is our learning from the previous thing? 2 raised to n is equal to number of times the clock's frequency divides. What is n here? n is total bits of the count variable. Correct? So this is this is how it is. Now with this knowledge I apply 2 raised to count of 0 means so count of 0, how it is calculated? So n, it is n is 2, 4. So uh, let me see, count of 3. So if I assign this value, if I assign this value, this is 4. Because n minus 1 it will be. n is equal to 4 means you will get n equal to 0 means you will get 0, 1, 2, 3 total. 0, 1, 2, 3. So, these are the 4 bits. I am taking the most significant bit. So, 2 raised to 4 will give you 16 times division. If I take count of 2, so count of 2 is sufficient if I take 3 bits, right? So, 2 raised to 3 is equal to 8 bits. Count of 1, I can have it in 2 bit counter also. 2 bit counter, count of 0, count of 1, only 2 will, will be there. With 2 bit counter also, I can have it. 2 raised to 2, 4 times it divides. If I have one bit counter, I have only one bit, only this one, one bit counter, then it is 2 raised to 1 equal to 2. It will divide it by 2. So, this is uh, the extraction of the information from the previous fundamental. Now, we are at the last part of the understanding. The last part is, the question was like this. This is a frequency division block we need to divide division block. Input frequency is F clock is 1 megahertz. Output frequency F naught is output frequency uh, or division divided frequency, whatever you call F naught, let me call it as. It should be 500 kilohertz if I am not wrong. Yeah. Here, 500 hertz. 500 hertz. Five hundred hertz. Okay, so this is our problem statement. Now we shall just uh, proceed in solving it. See, here the formula is 
how many number of times it should be divided c r this is a formula 2 raised to n equal to number of times a clock's frequency to be divided number of times a clock frequency to be divided means what it means this output frequency and the out input frequency for example input frequency is how much f clock this is f naught if i divide this if i divide this then i'll get to know like how many how many times the frequency should be divided so number of times the clock frequency divides i can get it by dividing input input frequency divided by output frequency if i divide this to this then i'll get definitely i'm going to get see this is the input frequency how many times i i need to divide it that i need to decide if i get to know that then i'll get this right hence i get with a new formula that 2 raised to n is equal to f clock the input frequency f clock is equal to the output required f naught is a required output output this is f clock input i can write clock input clock input that's it now take this this thing so you'll get what is this f clock input 1 mega hertz divided by 500 hertz this is one six zeros this is hertz hertz cancels phi zero zero so two zeros two zeros get cancels so you get uh one two three ten thousand two raised to n is equal to ten thousand now we need a calculator here because two thousand equal to uh, two raised to n equal to uh, ten thousand so i need to take a log n is equal to log to the base 2 because it is 2 log to the base 2 thousand this is what you need to take so in your calculator if you want to do it you will by default have log to the base 10 so that's why what you have to do is so you have to take like this you know the log logarithmic arithmetic so i don't uh, detail it so lo log of 1000 divided by log of 2 if you take it you will get the value as 10.96 you can you can check it in the calculator just after this class or you have the calculator in front of you you can just take it approximately it is 11 so 11 times if i divide 11 times if i frequency divide then i get this one so how many times i need to divide 11 times frequency division is needed so 11 times it is needed see if i want 11 times this is see uh previous slide we division of frequency by two times means zero is needed Division of 4 times means 1 is needed. Division of 8 times means 2 is divided. Division of six times, 16 times means 3 is needed. So, division of 11 times. Uh, this 11 bit. So, whatever. N is equal to 11 bit. Sorry. N directly we got, we got 11. Directly we got 11. N, N equal to 11. So, N equal to 11. Here N equal to 2, 3, 4 like that it is. Here I got it as N equal to 11. So, I need to implement a counter of n equal to 11 bits okay so you should define a reg of count which is having 11 bits that is 10 down to 0 so you should assign new clock width new clock width count of new clock width count of 10 that's it so this thing with the code with the xilinx simulation i'll cover it in the next session okay so please uh, revisit it recheck it when i upload the uh, video today so just go through it again and understand it to the perfect extent so that in the next session we write the code for it so we use the frequency division for most of the codes in the next sessions so you will see its importance Okay, so now let me take the doubts if you have any. That's it for today.